Yo, what's up? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Friday, June 24th, 2022. I'm one of your host, Blessing, Addy Oye Jr. Joining me is Game Onesis, a.k.a. Janet Garcia. Yo, what's good? GameRight.com, Janet Garcia. Uh-huh. Why didn't you yeah. go with it? Why didn't you go see, with that, it? That was actually, see, that one was a fake one that I just thought of. Let me try to find, we were talking before the show for context of, I like how we in, immediately jump into a no context situation, even though oh, yeah. we totally could have set it up. They know. Also, they know. if my voice that's the thing awful. is like that's the thing is you got to start with the end, right? Like you got to you got to start mm-hmm. with. Oh man, I bet you're wondering how we got here, and then we rewind it and let the audience know. Like so, like we we're talking about how you know uh, different names for different companies, right? We we're talking about how kind of funny was almost mouth putting in a different timeline, and that's when you started to get into. Oh yeah, I almost named pen to pixels gameright.com. Not literally which, gamerite.com. That was never an idea I had, but I had really bad ideas. Okay. Here, hold on. I got I found them. Okay. Are you ready for this? So also, if I sound awful, it's because I am probably getting sick. So this is the this is that. I would just um, lean, lean into the new voice. Honestly, people, yeah. whenever I whenever I feel like whenever I get sick, as long as it's not like I've entirely lost my voice, which has happened sometimes and I still end up on shows. Um yeah. if I if I if my voice is like a little bit raspy. Some people out there like it because they're right. The like this is there. the new me. Um, Just lean into anyway, it. Anyway, this is like Halls Edition J, not sponsored, but should be. Shout out to Halls. Um, we had Crossplay, the carry. I like Crossplay. Sh- that's probably yeah, already taken. Like, that doesn't right? make. And these are just these weren't like I definitely want this. This was like how do we put out ideas for like my what became Penda Pixels, which is like my outlet and website and stuff. That also wasn't already taken. That also wasn't too cringy. So to get there. We, and I started with Gaming for the Culture. That was the initial name of the site, but it's really long, and like a lot of people have stuff similar, or even mm-hmm. like maybe even the exact use case in some cases. So I was like, okay, that's not. We're gonna have culture. to move from that. Um, but I had something party post game. Wait, wait, wait. Was it just called something party? Like it just something like, party? I was thinking like something with the word party in it. This was like me oh, putting okay, a list okay. of like I don't know something with party, uh, gaming compass, game pass. Game Onesis, no, which is the name second. of my portfolio website. I don't think you do Game Pass. Yeah, Game Pass. No, absolutely not. <laughs> was I was this just before Game Pass? There. There's no way. I was just throwing things out there. <laughs> something no, with the word village. I was thinking about naming my website Nintendo. <laughs> Look, something with the word village. Game village, village. game town, game diner, something with universe mm. or galaxy. Game base, which is actually the PlayStation fucking game base thing, so I don't know why I put that. End game, game pub, You cosmic definitely can gaming. get away with end game, I feel like. Yeah, I know, right? There's a, again, there's a lot of problems here, but you got to get it out there. Magnifier. Through the game like vine, that that's probably the worst thing I've ever magnifier heard. Magnifier is kind of fire. I actually. love magnifier. <laughs> yeah, magnifier, magnifier is pretty sick. Especially if you misspell it and make fire spelt like fire, like if yeah. I. Oh, that could be cool. Right? Yeah. Come on, come on, that you know that's cool. fire. Um, people are wondering, what am I talking about? That's a great question um, to ask any day. Today, <laughs> it's um, coming up with names for things, and we were talking about how I came up with Pen to Pixels and all the awful ideas I had prior. Those, those are people that came in late. They came in a few minutes late in, in, into the chat. The podcast kids know. The yeah, yeah, we okay. I only have a couple more left. That's so right. We podcast got, kids for life. I'm starting beef between the podcast got, kids um, and the chat. We got game lens, kaleidoscope, um, second controller, overwrite, replenish, critic slice, and that's it. And then I also I'm trying to think of now. And uh, now I'm trying to think of like um, LLC names now is my next problem because like I don't want to go too long on it. The TLDR is like sometimes you can an LLC can be beneficial to like separate you from like your business operations and then you can create extra businesses underneath it. It's like a whole freelance. Would you believe thing, but... that OK Beast was maybe my second idea for a name? And I was like, really? cool, nailed it. Yeah, I didn't think too I hard about it. I love that name. I, lo- I love OK Beast too because it's so nondescript and it can be, mm-hmm. it can be anything. And honestly, my the idea behind it Right, because like people are always like, "Oh, where'd that come from?" It's such a cool name. There's it literally means nothing. There's no meaning. There's no meaning behind it. I came. I came up with it because I looked around at the space and realized that like all of the outlets that like I liked or that were doing similar shit were doing like two two word titles, right? And so mm-hmm. it was kind of funny, right? Two words, giant bomb, two words, uh, achievement hunter, uh, funhouse, right? It was. It's always like a random like, what two words can you place together to sound cool? And uh, there was a blog that I would frequent, like in like high school or whatever, called OK Player, which is like a hip hop blog. And I always liked, mm-hmm. I always liked the idea of just putting OK in the name. So I was like, okay, well, OK, then what else? And then like I liked the word Beast, and I used to listen to a rap group called Humble Beast. So I was like, OK, Humble Beast, OK Beast, let's go OK Beast. OK Beast sounds good, and that, that was it. Yeah, and it took off. That's a good way to go about it. But ultimately, we did Panda Pixels because that was one of Isaiah's non awful names that also made sense. That mm-hmm. also was it's not super nondescript, but it's. A little bit more removed than like game something. No offense to outlets that have that title, but a lot of them do, right? So it's like maybe try to think of something else. 
Mm-hmm. Somebody in chat says fun house is one word. I un- I get that. But yeah, like, but it's, it's two still... words that they mix together, clearly. You exactly. Know what I mean? Compound yeah. word, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, enough about these different LLC names. Let's talk about today's stories, which include FromSoft's next game coming soon, question mark. Chris Pratt being very proud of his Mario impression and more because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every week at 10 a.m. live right here on Twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. We run you through the nerdy news you need to know about. If you're watching live, you can correct us when we get stuff wrong by going to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. If you don't want to watch live, you can watch later on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games, Roosteeth.com, or you can listen later on podcast services around the globe by searching for kind of funny games daily remember you can use epic creator code kind of funny on all epic store and epic in-game purchases like rocket league and fortnite to help support the channel to be a part of the show to patreon.com slash kind of funny games or bronze members or above get to write in and silver members or above get the show ad free with the exclusive daily post show janet you say that you have a cold right i am uh i didn't get my coffee this morning i'm running off of tea and so I'm dealing with my I also own have tea. What, what kind of tea do you have, real quick? It is uh, black tea with like mango flavor in there. Oh my god, I have black tea as well. Mine is yeah. um, it's made from like a small, it's a, it's made from my local game shop, um, and it's a portal themed tea called the Cake Is a Lie. It's black tea, vanilla, That's candy awesome. sprinkles, wow. something that I can't read because I hand wrote it, and then flavored something flavored caramel is the holy flavoring. shit. That sounds incredible. Yeah, yeah it's so do you good. put honey in there? Do you go no, sugar? I don't like honey. Like it's like so viscous. It's like so thick. Yeah, um, but like it, it mixes in there once you. Yeah, I'm gonna. I might try you. honey today because I'm doing the hot toddy. I know the hot toddy failed you, but you didn't have the lemon either. So maybe you know. I like bought all the fixings. Once I can drink alcohol today, I'm gonna start drinking. If if the hot toddy actually works for you, I need you to give give me your exact like ingredients yeah, and yeah. measurements it for those. Totally ingredients. works. Because totally at this point, I'm getting a sore throat like three times mm-hmm. a year, and it's not funny. I need to figure out a better solution for it. Housekeeping for you. A new PS I love you. XO. XO is up right now. It is me. It is Janet. It is Greg. And we're talking about PS Plus Premium and what we want from Ghost of Tsushima 2. It's a pretty fun episode. You can check that out right now on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games and on podcast services around the globe. Thank you to our Patreon producers, Gordon McGuire and Fargo Brady. Today, we're brought to you by Uplift, but we'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin with what is and forever will be. The Roper Report. I'm doing, I'm doing it. I don't know Wait. why it's not picking up on oh. Discord. It, it, I do it every single time. It's it, the the kids can hear it, but for some reason Discord isn't picking it up, and it makes it very awkward. <laughs> so, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's on me. That's on me. It's, <laughs> no, it's, it's time. For, it's time for some news. We have six stories today. Oh, Baker's dozen. Let's start. That sounded that was awesome, Roger. Did you hear that? I, I, heard, I heard that. that. <laughs> heard that one loud and clear. Moment redeemed. It's all Moment good. redeemed for you, Roger. Let's talk about story number one. From Software's next project is in its final stages. This comes from John Carson. I have it here. It says gamesindustry.biz. I don't think that's right. I think it's Game Informer. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna post it into Google. Maybe that was a typo that I made. Uh yeah, no, this is from Game Informer. This is John Carson at Game Informer. In an interview with 4Gamer.net, Elder Ring director and president of From Software, uh, Hidetaka Miyazaki, revealed some information about the studio's next project and even left uh, some room for the possibility of an Elden Ring sequel. Translations of the interview are courtesy of Google Translate, so please forgive if they are a little rough. Regarding the next project from From Software, 4Gamer inquired about three games that were in the pipeline when Sekiro was in development. At the time, two of the titles were unknown to the public, with one ending up being this year's smash hit Elden Ring. As for the other, we seemingly don't have to wait too long to see what it is. When asked whether the other game uh, was still in development, Miyazaki responded, quote, Yes, development is in its final stages, end quote. Miyazaki doesn't show his cards on what that game may be, but rumblings in the industry point towards a resurgence of another From Software franchise, Armored Core. Trading the steel of medieval armor for the steel plating of high-tech mecha would be a refreshing change of pace for the studio after its run of Magic and Melee-centric Souls titles. It'll also be interesting to see if the long-running robot series will take any design philosophies from its From Soft sister series. Whether the Armored Core rumors turn out to be true will hopefully be revealed in the near future. From Software's staff is growing in size, making the scope and scale of Elden Ring possible with the available manpower. With more developers on hand, Miyazaki says multiple projects are in the works from, from Software and various directors. Quote, I was able to create a title with a sense of scale of Elden Ring because of the growth of human resources in the company. But from now on, I think we'll, we'll often leave the project to them. In fact, there are several titles directed be, by people other than me, and it's time to increase the number of developers. End quote. Elden Ring was also a big topic in the interview, with Miyazaki confirming updates will continue to roll out for the game, but bigger content updates like DLC are not mentioned. 
Although he does leave the door open for a sequel of some kind. When 4Gamer states an Elden Ring 2 would sell very well, but, uh, but From Software has been shying away from sequels these days, Miyazaki responds, quote, It's a case-by-case basis. There are merits to both taking over the numbering and creating a new, new work with a new title. So I would like to select as appropriate, end quote. Janet Garcia, I want to stop there. We have a lot that we can dive into from this article revolving what From Software is working on. Is there anywhere that, where you would like to start? Yeah, for um, let's start with Elden Ring updates. Like, what would you want to see from that? Is at this point you beat Elden Ring already? So, is there anything mm-hmm. that would make you come back other than a DLC? And like, sort of, what's your? Yeah, let's just start there. Let's just start there. I I'm excited for whatever updates come through. When he says updates, though, I, I with with Elden Ring, I think they can be anything as wide as oh, we want to work on more DLC, all right, or a DLC period because we've not really gotten DLC for the game yet. Or it could be anything as simple as um, uh, balancing updates because that's a mm-hmm. thing that they've done quite a bit. Like they've even added like you know some uh, map markers for people. They've added in like new side NPC quests, like just casually the, through the, through those in their weeks after the game came out. Like they're not. Um, they're, they're not a stranger to just doing casual updates uh, in that manner. I, though, would want something bigger. I want something more, right? Like, there are certain areas of Elden Ring that feel like they're closed off for the specific purpose of DLC. Um, and chat can correct me if I'm wrong. There's, like, a certain spot where there's, like, a jig, a, a jig, a big pot man that's, like, standing in front of what looks like a stadium. And I never got the answers to what the fuck that is, right? Like, you walk up to him and he makes you fight, like, three hunters um, that, like, for folks who aren't uh, familiar with from software games like they're basically like spoofed player characters that come in that are actually npc controlled but you fight them they look like player characters essentially and you you go through that right you go through a, a gauntlet of three of those guys that are standing in front of this big this big pot man once you beat them you talk to the pot man he gives you a talisman but then like he doesn't say anything more and that feels like a tease of hey maybe you go in there to do a boss rush type thing and honestly that'll be my biggest ask like uh Sekiro, I believe as a post-launch thing added in uh, a boss rush mode for that game. And I absolutely love that, right? The, the bosses are my favorite part of the From Software games and my favorite part of Elden Ring. I want a boss rush mode. I went, and for, especially for the amount of bosses that are in Elden Ring, like, yeah, let me fight them one after the other and just do, do that straight. Like, that's my, that's my that'd be my preferable way to go about it. Bro, that'd be a 10-hour mode. Kirby. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Just add Kirby in the Forgotten Land, like that whole little area where you can like fight because it also has like a boss rush thing and a bunch of town stuff. Like just toss that in there. Here, here's the way I would do it, right? Because Roger mentions that, that would be a 10 hour mode because there are so many fucking Elden Ring bosses. If I were to, if, if I was at From Software, right? I'm one of the directors that Miyazaki's talking about. He's like, yo, let me just give, let me give this project to esteemed game director Blessing Adio AG, the who's OK never beast. worked on a video oh. game. The OK Beast himself, right? I would make it more of a score attack thing. I would have, I would have, and this probably sounds like a nightmare to Elden Ring players, but it's like a dream come true to me. I would have it have online leaderboards where you can co- compare with your friends of how how good can you beat these bosses and also how far can you get. And I would, ha- I would and I would have some level of like procedure to it right where it is almost like a roguelite boss rush thing where you're competing with leaderboards of your friends to see how far you can get because you have so much content you can work with there with the uh, let, let me know in the chat how many bosses there are in Elden Ring. you have so many bosses you can work with you have different arenas different areas that you can throw in there you can randomize that stuff if you wanted to maybe give maybe give the players like a choice of different armor sets that they want to put on or different weapons that uh, they can equip i think you can get crazy with it and make it such a like make it a different really cool uh like different type of from software experience than what we have in the past like i would go above and beyond with it in that sense but i think a regular boss right but a boss rush mode would be fine too in the way that they have in the Sekiro. yeah and then what would you want from this other project i mean it seems like the other project is armored core that's what the reports and rumors have been i honestly don't know what i want from armored core i'm not i'm not i'm not a person who's been an armored core person in the past um I, what i do want is for them to like take the learnings that they've had over the last decade with demon souls dark souls bloodborne Sekiro, and elder ring right like what are the things that work about those games that you can apply to Armored Core? Granted, Armored Core is going to be very different, right? It's not a that's not a third person melee action game, right? It's a big mech com- combat game, so you have to go about it very differently. But I wonder if there are things that they've learned in terms of creating a compelling world or uh, going about telling narrative as, in a in a certain way, making it more about maybe exploration and uh, like the art, like the the almost archaeological like you know, like digging of, oh, what are the, inf- what information can we glean from items or talking to characters in this forgotten world or whatever the, what, whatever the case may be, right? Like, I think there's stuff narratively that you can take from the recent From Software games that can maybe help ele- elevate uh, Armored Core. And then, like, 
what are the things that you've learned about combat and how to make a really, really, really solid combat system that could work for Armored Core? Again, it's not, it's going to be different. It's going to be weapon, um, different kinds of weapon weaponry, right? Like guns, missiles, whatever, whatever the fuck you can put on a mech. But I do think that they've gotten so good at combat that I would love to see how they would go about doing that in in um, an Armored Core game. As far as the cadence of everything, are you like surprised to hear that they're in sort of the final stages of development on this next project? Or do you think that's par for the course in, in terms of the cadence of release in comparison to what we saw with like Sekiro and Elden Ring? Like, is this just a new expected cadence, do you think? Or is this sort of like it just happened out this way? From Software is a bit like Insomniac in a sense where I don't understand how they do it. How they put out so many quality games at such a rapid pace because they put out what bloodborne was in uh 2015 sekiro was 2019 in between there at some point was dark souls 3 um uh elden ring you know came out this last year right and it is they are they put out games at such a rapid pace them saying that they're in the final stages of their next title is a bit surprising to me i would have expected armored core to maybe be 2025 uh, Pikmin and, final stages where it's like it's done it's like where and, is it and that's You're the thing like, is i, I wouldn't be surprised if final they're using the term final stages very loosely by final stages they mean like okay we understand what this game is going to be but it's still going to take us the next two to three years to polish it up and, and have it ready for for release um but yeah no like they're, they're a very impressive developer and the fact that they are staffing up and now Miyazaki is leaning off of directing everything himself and putting things on other directors to do. I think that is going to free them up to make games at a more rapid pace. You know, like if we get Armored Core by, let's say, 2024, and maybe we get an Elden Ring 2 by 2026 or 2027, you know, Alongside that's going to be... the next Horizon game. <laughs> Alongside the next Horizon. No, Horizon is mm -hmm. going to come out with whatever the, the next new big open world thing is going to... Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is going to be when, when Horizon comes out. Um, but yeah, like I... I, I I'm impressed by it. I'm not super surprised by it because I, I, they've been hitting this sort of rapid cadence for a while. But it is it is super impressive for for this developer because at this point, they're putting out masterpiece after masterpiece, which is just insane for the level of quality quality that these games are. Do you have yeah, any interest in a in an armor core or even an Elden Ring an Elden Ring two? Uh, I think I might be done, but I I want to I don't know I don't want to be too brash with it. Like my Souls experience has been weird and sparse um i don't know like i wonder i'm sure there's somewhere in the multiverse there's a world where i beat elden ring and i'm having like the time of my life but i'm i'm not there right now um i don't know i'm not sure how much more i want to keep trying um it's been weirdly mixed because i had like bloodborne when i first started and i was like i don't know what this is no thank you like the light bounced off of it so quickly that I barely even knew what it was. So I was just like, oh, this isn't, this, I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. um, so that was that. That I don't really, I barely even count as having played because I literally like went a few feet and I was like, I don't know, man, it's a lot going on. Like, let me just play something else. Then of course, Demon Souls, I ran through that. That was fun, but that was a very guided experience. And then Elden Ring, maybe if I played Elden Ring when it wasn't just out, like maybe years from now when everyone knows what to do and can like, slowly usher me through i don't know but i'm not sure if i'm retired yet i mm -hmm. think i can be tempted one more time but it's kind of a lot it's been a lot how if if, if the next armored core game is something way different from any of the souls games do you think that's something that can pull you in right if it feels like a brand new from the ground up uh kind of thing that that from software is doing like that is that doesn't have the, the extreme difficulty or the the like hidden like the hidden mechanics nature of like a souls game do you think <sighs> that'll so get you in I mean, yeah, but I don't I don't know that they would do that. Like, I'm not sure how different it, it is going to be, um, but I'm open to it. It's it's interesting because everyone says that, like, Elden Ring is inherently more approachable because when you get stuck, you can just go do something else. But I, I find the the breadth and difficulty of every single thing to just be so overwhelming that I'm like, I don't want to go do something else because something else is also hard. It's like mm -hmm. when you have a list of things to do and all of them are kind of like a little bit brutal it's like okay well what chore do you want to do i'm like i don't want to do any of these i don't want to put the laundry away i don't want to wash the dishes i don't want to take the trash down i want to lay down and that's what i, I want to lay down go to sleep i want to go i want to play some overcooked too yeah but like i i it would take a lot for me to reinstall elden ring because i don't want to clown myself to that degree even if it was just in the privacy of my own home like i don't have to tweet out every single thing i do though i often do um i could i don't think i could live with the shame of re-downloading and then deleting again after the initial download delete that i went through so 
it would take a lot for me to want to do that, but we'll see. I do I do want to throw out a, a couple of tidbits from Twitter, right? Shout out to Nibel. Of course, Nibel is one of the people on Twitter that you should be following if you're into video game news or video game updates whatsoever. Uh, he tweeted out from uh, this same interview uh, a few more details. Uh, again, this comes from at Nibelian. One interesting tidbit is that Miyazaki is, is apparently interested in working on something that he describes as more abstract fantasy uh, than the projects we've seen from From so far, and how, he, and how he has come up with a lot of ideas and images that don't fit their current games. Uh, so that's interesting. And then Nibel also follows up with uh, Miyazaki also notes that From Software is working on improving the compensation and treatment of its employees and that they plan to increase the salaries of young to mid-career employees as well. He Yay. claims that yeah, uh, he claims that the, the working environment has, quote, improved greatly in recent years, which we absolutely love to hear. Right. That is amazing. And then one more thing to throw in here. This comes from at from software underscore PR. They tweeted this out this morning. Uh, we have started recruiting staff for a wide range of occupations for multiple new projects. We look forward to working with you on making games with from software. Please check the special site if you like. So, yeah, that confirms one that, again, they're staffing up. They're looking for uh, more people to work there. But then also they're working on multiple multiple projects. From Software is out here just cranking out dope game after dope game. And I hope it continues, right? I've, I always get the fear where you see, a, you see a game company rise to prominence, start killing it, and then they trip up because they take on way more than, than, than they can chew, right? Like, it is, it is the cyberpunk situation of Witcher 3 came out. Oh, it's a masterpiece. Now let's hire in a bunch more people, but you don't you don't grow smartly, and then you start putting out things that don't uh, uh, come up to par, right? Like from software, I got a lot of faith in as a studio, but I also hope that they grow carefully and grow in a way that is very targeted, right? Like, hey, we want to make make these dope games. We also want Miyazaki to, to not be the one that is leaned on for every single thing, and we want to pass on that influence and that in that uh, knowledge to people under him or people that are coming up alongside him. I think that's a good thing. I think, too, it's so smart to, like, specifically target. I mean, give, give reasons to everybody, like, you know, fuck it. But I think it's really smart to specifically target young to mid-career employees because I think that's how you draw talent to your studio. Um, it is so difficult in a lot of fields, honestly, but to make a decent living when you're just starting. Um, and even, like, you know, obviously media and development are different both in challenges and also, like, what they get paid. Um, but... Like a lot of times when you know someone making like a decent living, they're like, well, it's because I've been doing this for 87 years. And I'm like, I don't know if I want to wait 87 years to be able to buy a sandwich. You know what I mean? Like that's kind of mm -hmm. a little bit brutal. So um, I like targeting that because, um, yeah, too often I think solid financial compensation is treated like a carrot on a stick when it should be like kind of the ground level. Like you should be pretty 100%. comfortable just as is um and i know unfortunately that's not true for many people across many different industries but that is where i'd love to see us get to um especially like in a in an industry like this where i feel like they can decide how they're going to scale so I, I love that they're scaling also alongside the conversation of increasing salaries because you also see that problem too where it's like oh you can't you can't do my raise but we just hired someone so like that's my raise money and they're like well why would i pay you more to do what you're already doing when i could pay someone else to get more labor and just stretch, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think so often things are structured like that and it's such a misstep. So I, I like that. That's part of the planning. Um, it seems like they got everything kind of together. Um, I'm jealous, honestly. Like, I don't have my yeah. shit together nearly this much. It's a fucking mess. Well, maybe secretly it's, you know, I'm sure they have many challenges themselves, but it sounds like they have a good structure and vision for the future on, on what they're doing. By the way, Jan, I want to compliment the the sweatshirt. I'm just noticing that it says Game Honest is on that. Did you make this yeah. yourself? Yeah, so this is from like I wish I had. Oh, hold on. The, like the mic arm is the mic. Yeah, arm I'm like is trying to look around the mic arm, even though I know that's not how cameras work. <laughs> yeah, so it's yeah, it says Game Honest. It has my logo. Um, I tried to make merch like a year ago, and it just didn't. I wasn't happy with like, the quality of it. So ultimately, I sell very little merch. I think you can technically still get like Game Honest mugs with like this logo on it. Um, Wait, where can but people that's, get that? What's the link? Oh God. Oh man. Game I'm like com slash store. No, I have no <laughs> idea the offhand. Slash market. I feel like it's. Oh God, was it, it game it's right? Like, <laughs> it's game right .com. I'll find it. Maybe it was Teespring or somebody. It was like one of the like classic vendors. Um, but yeah, but this this one actually held up really well. Like this this shirt was like from whatever company I got it from. This sweater is the only skew that I thought really lasted the wash and the wear and tear. Um, but yeah, eventually I'd like to sell Surviving it. Surviving the wash and the wear and tear is very important. Yeah, because I've had this for like a year and like it's not the the most amazing print quality, admittedly, but I think it's like close to good enough like again I, i'm still trying to find a place that's like just generally good at everything but like i'm solid with this as like a baseline like if everything was like this i probably would have kept it as is but oh, yeah. yeah it says game on it says i wear it often it's comfortable
Story number two, Into the Breach comes into the mobile space via Netflix. This comes from Jay Peters at The Verge. Into the Breach, the sci-fi turn-based strategy game from the makers of FTL Faster Than Light, will be available on iOS and Android as part of a Netflix subscription beginning July 19th, developer Subset Games announced on Thursday. Since late last year, Netflix has offered a selection of mobile games that subscribers can play play for free. Uh, the company has been steadily adding titles in the months since launch, and although much of what's available is generic-looking casual fare, Netf- damn, it's like a r- random roast in the middle of this article. Netflix seems committed, but it's not it's not wrong though. Uh, Netflix seems committed to adding more notable games like Into the Breach. Earlier this month, at its Geek Week event, Geek Week event, uh, for example, Netflix revealed that a bunch of indie games, including Spirit Fair and a new entry in the Rain series, would be. Added added to its mobile offerings. The iOS and Android version of Into the Breach has a, quote, revisited and redesigned, end quote, touchscreen interface, uh, according to Subset Games, and there won't be ads or in-app purchases. It'll have the same content as versions on other platforms, uh, including uh, the new advanced edition, uh, new advanced edition additions that will also be available on July 19th. Now, I read the story. I was like, damn, that's really cool. That's fantastic. That's a good move for Netflix. It seems like as th- as time goes on, they're making better and uh, bigger decisions about what games to include on their platform. Um, but also, this is what kind of pushed me over the edge uh, of bu- of um, not, uh, downloading the Netflix app on my phone because I didn't have it on there before and checking out the games tab. Because I, ne- I had never checked out the, the, the Netflix games tab. And I saw that Exploding Kittens released, I believe, today as a game. And I love Exploding Kittens, the card game. And so I was like, okay, cool. Well, I definitely got to check out the the Netflix um, uh, game section now to see what else is on there. And it is what this article describes as a lot of just casual games. A lot of like, here's pool or here's an infinite runner. Here's the ra- here's poker or whatever, right? It's just the, mo- it's the most random of shit that you'd find on there. But they do have gems, right? It is, oh yeah, here's also the Stranger Things game. And also here's Exploding Kittens. And I did a round of Exploding Kittens uh, on my phone. And that shit was fun as hell. I was surprised by like, oh man, they really did the thing. Like this is exactly what I would want from a, from Exploding Kittens mobile card game online. Is it just against like the CPU? I'm guessing. No, it's against other people that are playing. Like you can oh, you can play with a okay. CPU by yourself, but and that's not how I would want to play it. But you can also play against other people in like a can lobby you, with like four other can, people. Can you have like friends on there? Like I have actually yes. not checked out the Netflix thing. Okay, cool. Do you have any like friends on there? Like do you no. feel like you? Okay, I'll yeah. get it and then we can play Exploding Kittens against each other because I oh, played for the first down. time. I got the card game and, and it's funny because Exploding Kittens is such a like. And not in a bad way, but like a basic card game. Like it's one of the few that like m- most people have played, but I hadn't gotten to it yet. Um, and I played for the first time, like, I don't know, a week or two ago. And yeah, I love it. It's so wonderfully simple, but highly entertaining. Um, yeah. I. What do you think it would take to really get Netflix to be in the core conversation of gaming? Obviously, there's a level to which it's in the conversation. Like we're talking about it now, but there's also a show where we like kind of cover everything that's from the day so i feel like we kind of catch a little bit more than might make it to like you know games cast for instance so what do you think it would take to get it to that level i don't think they want to be in that level i i think they're because games cast right we talk about xbox we talk about playstation we don't talk about mobile that often it is very like there has to be a a florence or a mobile game that kind of comes out of like a, a grindstone or a marvel strike force or whatever the fuck greg likes to talk about you know you have to be one of those to really to really enter that space but i i think netflix is more so going for the almost the, like the apple arcade sphere but not even with the uh level of curation that goes into apple arcade yeah i feel like most of the time apple arcade has the good shit netflix feels like they're a step below that but I do think that they're trying to rise up, and I think getting these deals with Into the Breach and other mobile games, like there was uh, what was the one with the was it the Oxford developer that was acquired by mm-hmm. by Netflix, you know, like yeah, Night School, yeah, Night School. Getting in games like that and do and making deals like that is going to go a long way into putting you in the forefront of the mobile conversation. But I don't think we're ever going to talk about them as far as Xbox, PlayStation, Netflix. You know, I that's not I don't that's not their business plan. But in terms of the, the Netflix of gaming, some are calling them. The, the Netflix, the Netflix of gaming. I yep. do think that they could enter that Apple Arcade level of conversation if they continue to make deals like this. Um, and yeah, like I, I was, I honestly was surprised with how much of a good time I had with Exploding Kittens playing right before this episode of KFGD. And more stuff like that would make me, uh, uh, you know, go on that app more and check out more games on that app. You know, I think it's cool that all the stuff is, th- all the stuff there is free with a Netflix subscription, and you're not having to worry about ads and all that stuff. It's a pretty good deal. Um, and so good for Netflix. Yeah. Um, yeah, I need to, I need to check that out more because I 
I've been kind of waiting for more reasons to check it out. And then also, you know, it had kind of a, like many things, a slow rollout of like when it drops, when it's available to you. Um, and yeah, I think their initial lineup was a little bit on the weaker end, but now it's like, okay, they're going to have some really uh, potentially cool projects. Um, and yeah, I'm a little, I'm also like a little bit nervous for like the future of like Netflix's gaming sector, especially with them acquiring studios like night school, because I'm like, please don't, don't send night school out to die like yeah. either because i don't ruin the studio. the studio so you know and even just by like i think that was like an unintentional consequence of a lot of elements of stadia too now granted a lot of those projects we've now heard through like the grapevine rumor mill whatever that they maybe found life uh you know beyond um stadia yeah. but it's definitely yes beyond uh definitely a little bit of a concern but yeah i'll check this out and you know i guess start adding people on there i've literally never used it but i do have the backbone controller so I'm like set up to do more mobile stuff and I, I got a new phone oh, yeah. like, earlier this year. So, yeah. You know what else is a great deal? Patreon.com slash kind of funny games where you can go and get the show ad free. And speaking of ads, let us tell you about our sponsors. Shout out to Uplift for sponsoring this episode. I've been using my Uplift desk for well over a year now. I love the thing so much I decided to write a rap song for them. The build quality is real good. It's made of real high quality wood. They didn't ask for it, I just did it anyway. Getting my Uplift desk immediately improved my mood. Whenever I'm on shows, I'm standing up, I'm feeling a lot more energetic. And also I kind of feel like I was just maybe creating some bad habits sitting down at a desk all day. I would move my legs up, I'd sit underneath my legs on my chair, and eventually all that stuff just created really bad back pain for me. Choose from laminate, whiteboard, bamboo, solid wood, butcher block, or even custom solid wood or laminate options. Uplift Desk won New York Times Wire Cutters Best Standing Desk from 2019 to 2022. And while I'm at it, I'm just gonna give them an award as well. Best Standing Desk that I use in my bedroom from when they sent it to me until now. Uplift Desk have a 15 year warranty. They ship the same day you order with free shipping and free return shipping. So if you've been feeling the effects of sitting at a desk for eight hours a day, maybe you want some more energy in your life. Maybe you want to do squats in the middle of a Zoom call or something. Uplift your life. Go to kindoffunny.com slash uplift. Story number three, Janet. Chris Pratt says his Super Mario Brothers voice is unlike anything you've heard in the Mario world. This I'm comes scared. from Mark Malkin. At, that sounds like a threat, right? Uh -huh. This comes from Mark Malkin at Variety. According to Chris Pratt, his voice performance as Mario in the upcoming feature adaptation of Super Mario Brothers, a video game, will be, quote, unlike anything you've heard, end quote. Variety got a chance to catch up with Pratt at the Wednesday night premiere of his new Amazon Prime video series, The Terminal List, to talk about his uh, talk about finding his voice for the film, which co-stars Charlie Day as Luigi, which I forget about, and that's hilarious. Uh, there's been much internet discussion over Pratt's casting in the animated film as the Italian plumber, despite his non-Italian background, uh, with critics expressing concern that his accent could potentially be offensive. However, the film's co-producer, Illumination Entertainment's Chris Mel Melodandry uh, defended Pratt's uh, casting and vowed that his voice work is, quote, phenomenal in a recent interview with 2Fab. Pratt echoed Mel Melodandry's sentiment, uh, telling Variety that Mario's voice has been updated. Quote, I worked really closely with the, the directors in trying out a few things and landed on something that I'm really proud of and can't wait for people to see and hear, Pratt said. Quote, it's an animated voiceover narrative. It's not a live action movie. I'm not going to be wearing a plumber suit running all over. I'm providing a voice for an animated character, and it is updated and unlike anything you've heard in the Mario world before, end quote. The untitled Universal movie, directed by Aaron Horvath and Michael Jelenic, uh, will hit theaters next April. Rounding out the cast are Anya Taylor-Joy, Jack Black, Keegan-Michael Key, Seth Rogen, Kevin Michael Richardson, Fred Armisen, and Sebastian Miniscalco. Janet Garcia... What the, where are you at with this movie? Are you looking forward to it? Because I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it for the chaos of 100%. the culture. Like, I, you know, at this point, and again, I got AMC A-list now. Nothing's stopping me from witnessing the worst things and the best things that you can put into a movie theater at AMC. Um, anyway, but yeah, I'm going to, I'm definitely going to check this out because it's like, yeah, I, you have to. The morbid curiosity alone is enough. I think the only way I wouldn't watch it is maybe if people were like, this is so bad, like you don't even want to see it. But also, if it's that bad, no, I can just walk if out. If it's that bad, I'm watching that shit. Like I could just I'm watching walk this out. Maybe no matter what, <laughs> like I'm this. The cast is stacked. That is I the thing love, that, that gives me hope. I would honestly. love if um, Luigi totally had his Italian accent, and then Mario just doesn't, just for no reason. Oh my god, Charlie Day doing the Italian accent as Luigi would be. I imagine amazing. though they're not gonna. I'm, I'm really curious as to how this is gonna come together because I mean. I don't know if they've talked about it, so let me know if you have that background or, or chat. But have they talked about like to what degree there will be like 
even voice lines because Mario doesn't historically say very much anyway. So I wonder like if it's just going to be like I mean, the Wahoo's different and that's it. You, not like hi, do you hello, drop the, hi. Do you drop the money on hello. Chris Chris Pratt, uh, Charlie Day, Anya Taylor Joy, Jack Black, Keegan Michael Keith, and Seth Rogen to not have them be talking the whole time? I want all the voice. I want all the voice acting in this. You thing. might, but you think they're going to say like full on like, "Hey, how's it going? Good morning." Yes. Well, not, I'm Mario. Not, not those Hi. lines. I'm Mario. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I feel like they're going to look at the camera and writer, say, "Hey, okay? hey, I'm, I'm Mario." Critic, all right. Hi, I'm Mario. <laughs> I think the writing team might get deeper in their bag than that. But yes, I do think that they're going to be saying full on sentences. I still hold by my theory that it's going to be a Jumanji situation where it is going to be Chris Pratt playing whatever Sam Donald. Um, let me make up a person. Sam Donald gets su sucked into a video game and now he's Mario all of a sudden and he's not acting, he's not doing the Mario accent. He's just at, he's just being <laughs> Sam Donald, this man that I made. Oh, him. okay. That'd be like I feel like that'd be trippy because I think it'd be difficult not to make that seem like it's a weird dub. You know what I mean? Or like if you like you know when you play like what the dub and it's like you just yeah. talk over the faces like well, I, I think about it like, like Detective Pikachu. You give you give Mario the mannerisms of a non Mario person. Like he's right, emoting like, and acting Pikachu, like Chris Pratt. But with Pikachu, it's so much easier because Pikachu never was like spitting bars we understood anyway. You know what I mean? Because he's just like Pika, like you know, and just like yelling in different inflections. Yeah, but Mario is basically Pikachu. You know, like what? How he much said, has Mario said in the past? Oh man, Mama Mia. He said, "It's a me." Here I go again, Mama. How can I? Okay. Anyway, you probably don't know what that is. No, that's, I know. I know that song. Okay. I watched Mamma Mia um, movies. Also, uh, also too, like my whole family listened to that episode and they were like, does like Blessing know who Daft Punk is now? People, so a lot of people think I don't know who Daft Punk oh is. God. And Stop. I don't think they realize that I know Daft Punk, I know who Daft Punk is better than you people do apparently. Um, <laughs> because I so know that they only have two popular songs. Like, sorry. Lines he said yes. Yeah. But it's because, you know, if I, like, I pushed you off the edge, I had to bring it back to, you know what I mean? It's like a bungee cord situation bring me back. Uh, with us working. Um, but yeah, like I think long voice lines, maybe a little bit in Sunshine, he might have had some stuff. Definitely the um, the idle animations in Mario 64. You know, I'm so tired. I'm a tired. Can like I give, that can was I give like you all my pitch lines. of what this? Uh -huh. I think that I think this. I think I've Please. talked about this before, but I think this movie is going to be like I've heard this before. Like some some people talking about it, like as a theory, and I think it's it's pretty solid. I think it's gonna be like a meta movie. Like I think they're gonna do like the whole thing where like the the video game version of Mario exists in this universe because he's like a popular fair figure. Like he's like in the news. Like he's like a popular. Oh, like, dude. it's like Lightyear. Yeah. Well, well, more of like oh, he watches. He like he sees like ma the Mario games. He's like that's not me. Like that's not how I actually talk. You know what I mean? Like that's I an love offensive that stereo idea. stereotype. And I think mm. that's what's gonna happen. And it's gonna be like kind of like him getting his mojo back throughout the entire movie, and then he's gonna have to actually save Princess Peach for the first time in like thirty years or whatever. Oh, and that's really good. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That's really good. Yeah, and then and with that, I think that actually worked really well with like the whole voice cast and everything like that. So yeah, because like here's the thing: Charles Martinet is also in this movie. Yeah, sure. exactly. And, and they didn't like say cameo. And, kind yeah, of and they didn't say who he was. Vibes. So I think it's just gonna be Mario. I think, I think it's gonna, gonna be, be yeah. yeah, accurate like video game accurate Mario. So is this he, is like the Mario the Mario metaverse, essentially the yeah. me Mario multiverse. Yeah, where it's like I I really like that idea, and I think that I they have to do something along those lines. Because I think there's a reason why you get this voice cast and not a voice cast of like people who are specifically voice actors. You know, not 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 that like I don't, I don't not that I have my doubts about Anya Taylor Joy <laughs> playing Peach or anything like that. But I think they're hiring them to be characters. I don't think they're hiring them to be to be full on play the like play these characters from the video game. I'm your that makes mama? sense. Like, if yeah, you're hiring Seth Rogen, you're theme. hiring Seth Rogen to be funny and be be himself. I think the other thing, though, that is a is a ripple into this is that there, I believe, there is a Donkey Kong movie coming up that is going to star Seth Rogen. So I don't know how that comes into play. And like, hi, I'm Donkey Kong. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm Donkey Kong. Um, you know, these lines are all free to use, by the way. Uh, if y'all are listening Ro out there, who Roger, in, the your, in your in your meta theory, yeah, is Donkey Kong a real person? That also yeah, they're all in the they're, video games. yeah, they're all real. They're all real. Like this is probably an event that happened, like or like a series mm -hmm. of events that happened like twenty years ago. Like like I don't know, maybe mm -hmm. like the truth of it is that Bowser isn't really that bad of a guy. Maybe Don Kong isn't that bad of a guy. You know what I mean? Like it was like it are, was kind are, of. But skewed. are they are they actual? Like is he a Koopa really, or is he a guy in the costume? Oh no 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 no! no. They're not real people. Like like <laughs> they're like like. like <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, because that would be ridiculous, Roger. Jeez. That would be. That would be. God forbid. That would be. That would be. That would be funny if it's like it's like the SpongeBob episode with the with the guy in the monkey suit. <laughs> He's just running around. <laughs> but it's just Donkey Kong. That's actually incredible. Um, 
before we move on, Blessing, can you give mm. me your best Mario that doesn't sound anything like a Mario we've heard before? Uh, oh, man. <laughs> Mama me. I don't know, man. I don't do impressions. You've heard my Obama. I'm not good at this. I feel like Andy, I can ping Andy Cortez, see what he's up to. I don't know. It looks like he's, he's doing another He's thing. sitting somewhere. He might be doing something. He's yeah, floating he's in the ether. It. That's okay. We'll Listen, save it for it. This is not the last time we talk about this movie. I'm gonna, so I'm going to ping general chat. In our think, Slack. Jesus Christ. Think it over. Andy, if you're free in the next 15 minutes, <laughs> <laughs> pop into KFGD real quick. There. All right. We're going to get Andy no to idea what in. he signed up for here. He has no idea. We're going to have him give him give us his best Mario. I think he knows action. exactly what he's signing that up sounds, for. <laughs> that sounds, no, a Mario that sounds unlike any Mario we've heard before. I mean, do you have one on deck? Do you? Can you? Can no, you hell, one? of course not. No, I asked the question. That's hard to do. No, you already did it. You already did it. Hi, it's me, Mario. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Hi, it's me, Killed Mario. it. That's pretty good, actually. That's pretty good. Let's it's move on me, to Mario. story <laughs> Story number four. Uh, Sonic Origins developer is very happy with the current, or very unhappy with the current state of the remastered collection. This comes from Ryan Leston at IGN. Sonic Origins developer Simon Thomley uh, has, hit out, has hit out at Sega uh, following a rocky launch of the remastered collection. Tom Lee, who is the founder of Headcanon, the co-development studio for Sonic Origins, has taken to Twitter to vent his frustrations, alleging that Sega introduced, quote, wild bugs into the game. Quote, and when I say wild bugs, it's not, not enemies, it's actual, like, glitches. Uh, quote, this is frustrating, he said. I won't lie and say that there, there weren't issues in what we gave to Sega, but what is in Origins is also not what we, we, what we tuned in. Oh, sorry, turned in. Uh, integration introduced some wild bugs that conventional logic would have one believe were our responsibility. A lot of them aren't, end quote. Head Cannon previously worked with Sega on the well-received Sonic Mania back in 2017. It assisted with Sonic Origins, remastering Sonic 3 and Knuckles for the collection. However, Tom Lee now alleges that he and his team essentially worked on a, quote, separate project that was then wrangled into something entirely different. Quote, we knew going in that there would be a major time crunch and we worked ourselves into the ground to meet it just so, just so this would be even uh, made and released. Again, I can take responsibility for my, my and my team's mistakes. And there, were, and there were some. Some actual mistakes. Some overlooking. Some rush jobs. Some stuff we noticed but weren't allowed to correct near the end. It's absolutely not perfect. And some, some of it is from us. It is complicated. End quote. Essentially, Tom Lee states that he and his team are unhappy with the state of the game. Since its release, uh, a number of bugs and issues affecting Sonic Origins have been reported by eager fans, and the overall reception has already been less than positive. Quote, I'm extremely proud of my team for their performance under such pressure, but every one of us is very happy about the state of Origins and even the Sonic 3 component. We weren't too thrilled about its pre-submission state either, but a lot of that was beyond our control, end quote. Sonic fans have been disappointed with a number of bugs, such as Tails coming, becoming stuck off-screen in Sonic 2, as well as particle issues and, ins and, and instances of Sonic getting stuck on hills. Quote, we asked to do major fixes near the end of submission, but weren't allowed, uh, weren't allowed due to submission and approval rules, said Tom Lee. Uh, he, he finishes saying, quote, we asked about delays early on and repeatedly, repeatedly, but we asked about delays early and repeatedly, but we're told they weren't possible. We offered to come back for post-release fixes and updates. We do not know yet if this is happening. End quote. It's unfortunate. Yeah, it's like a kind of like a dark peak behind the curtain, I think, of I mean, I'm, I'm guessing that like a lot of developers like deal with this kind of thing when it comes to like trying to get something from we made it to it's running and working on like these other platforms um in like sort of the pass in the baton of that um but yeah i mean i i like that i don't know how i'm not sure how much i feel about like revealing this level of information but i think it's a fair reveal i like that the the way it's written and talked about it's not just like oh, I mean, it was fun when we had it. I don't know what happened. Like, there's a layer of that, but there's also, like, an acknowledgement of, hey, here's what happened with us. We also kind of fucked up, and, like, we're trying to... We want it to be better. We're trying to make it work. Um, and I think that's kind of, like, all you can ask for at this point. Obviously, you'd hope that they allow space for that, but I think it's also important to know that, like, people aren't doing this with, like, malicious intent, right? Like, obviously, people are beholden to, like, different deadlines or different things that are sort of out of their hands that sometimes do result in um, issues like this arising. So, yeah, hopefully now they that it's out there and that they're talking about it, it might add pressure for them to kind of figure out a way to work together and sort of right these wrongs. But, yeah, I don't know. It's an unfortunate reality of trying to get out a product like this, I guess. Yeah, I mean, times. look. 
I, I went through and read some of the the Twitter thread uh, direct from uh, Tom Lee, who I believe is at HC Stealth on Twitter, because it's a it's a very long thread, kind of detailing, hey, like this is what it is, this is how development went for us. It was like our our version wasn't perfect, but also like us giving it to Sega and Sega take, taking taking it to the finish line introduced a number of bugs that a lot of people are looking at, probably thinking that they are us, and we promise that, that that's not us. And I, I understand the frustration there, especially if you're a developer who is again you're partnering with Sega. It's not like you're under Sega, right? And you're somebody who's probably other, also looking for other jobs in the industry you don't want people to look at that and go oh did you see the sonic origins thing they put out we don't want to hire them to work on mm -hmm. our collection for streets of rage or whatever mega man or whatever other pro uh, legacy project um, that they could get their hands on you know reading through some some tweets here right this is again uh, uh, i believe tom lee on twitter who says i have to apologize for not addressing anything like this sooner but you must understand many things of this sort are considered unprofessional and can hurt our relationship with sega meaning no origins updates and no further 2d pixel pixel sonic games from us why am i take why am i talking about it now then well there's just too much scrutiny over things that both are and are not related to us and i don't want to sit back in silence while people are asking why and how things happened to a product they put so much hope and money into and like i totally get that like i totally un understand the the frustration there right like i hope that like i i feel like this getting easily devolved into like a he said she said thing where mm -hmm. like you know if sega comes out and they're like actually no like this is what it is and i don't think sega would do that because they're a big corporation but like you know that is where things can get foggy and shaky and usually why you don't see people come up and speak this um openly and vocally about things right. like this because you don't want to hurt hurt that relationship and also you just don't want to cause like random drama that becomes murky and nobody knows who's really at fault at fault there but you know like either way it's unfortunate to see the final game come out with with, with so many bugs i was playing it yesterday and honestly like the experience i had with it was fine I didn't notice too much. Granted, I've only played maybe about 30 minutes or so. Maybe if I play deeper, I'll start. I'll end up with with Tails off screen for some reason in Sonic 2 and, and have that same frustration. Um, right. But either way, I totally get ha I totally get getting to the finish line, seeing your product busted and being like, yo, what the fuck, man? You know, that's a, a, that's a real emotion. Now, before we move on, I want to welcome to the call Andy Cortez. Andy, how's it going? Uh, I'm doing... I'm doing as good as anybody else can be doing right now. Bless. I have yeah. no idea what this is about. You just asked me to hop in here, and I'm here. We're doing a performance review, actually, for you. Um, oh. and so sit back. We're going to talk about how well you've been doing on shows. Now, uh, I want to talk to you about Mario, specifically this Chris Pratt thing. right? Chris Pratt said that he's going to give us a an updated version of Mario that we've not heard before. Did you hear this? Did you see this on the internet? The other yeah, day? I saw how he said, like, you all ain't ready for this shit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Something like that. <laughs> now, I... I called you in here because you're probably the best person at impressions here. I kind of funny. Mm -hmm. And me and Janet were wondering if you could give us a version of Mario that we've never heard before. A version of Mario. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hey. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. I got a lot it's, of allergies it's, it's right 10, now. 10 49 a.m. I get it. It's sort of allergies in the air right now. Mm. <clears throat> hey, fucking Luigi. Hey. Fuck. Really Thank you for your time. Oh, that was really absolutely good. worth it. Also, mm -hmm. I feel like the cough enhanced it, if anything. You know what I mean? Like, to, yeah. I yeah, like we're getting into like, character, you this know? This is a Mario who's, like, smoked cigarettes in his past. Yeah, yeah. I gotta. It's the instrument. You got to take care of your instrument, you know? My body's a temple. Hell yeah. Chat's like, sounds idea. a lot like Thwomp. Getting a little bit of a Ray, Ray Romano mixed with Thwomp, I think, is kind hey, of a... Hey, fucking Mario here. Yeah. Frog, yeah, Mario. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Nintendo's going to allow the F word in this upcoming Mario movie. They get but one. I do, they I do appreciate the... the this is bleep a, it out. Um... I mean, I can see them bleeping now. I guess they could. Yeah, they could just rock that bleep. Use the level... The um the one-up mushroom sound for it. Like if they can't really coins. get into the... If they can't get into the raw and real issues, what is even the point of releasing this film? You Thank know what I mean? You. Thank you, Janet. Yeah, what is going on politically in Mushroom Kingdom? Hopefully it's better than what's going on politically in our real life. Uh, I'm guessing not so much. It's kind of rough over there, but... Yeah, they're keep, they always princesses back. are getting kidnapped daily. They got their, it's their own issues. Andy Cortez, I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Uh, let's hop into story number five. Ubisoft CEO Yves Gilmont is taking a large pay cut. This is Ryan Leston again at IGN. Ubisoft's longtime CEO, Yves Gilmont, will voluntarily take a $327,000 pay cut for the coming year. Quote, this is a personal decision by Yves Gilmont, which he took considering that the company had not reached the fi financial targets that it had publicly communicated to the markets, a Ubisoft rep told Axios. 
Gilmol essentially waived his, quote, annual variable compensation, end quote, which is a bonus on top of his usual salary that fluctuates based on the financial performance of the company. The Gilmol pay cut, pay cut was not announced by Ubisoft, but instead tucked away in the fine print of a recent company filing. However, it follows a disappointing year for the company, which saw its operating profits fall by around 14% last year. The $327,000 pay cut equates to about a third of his annual compensation, reducing his compensation for the following year to around $656,000. This does not include stock awards that won't be available until after 2023. The majority of Gilmon's pay voluntary pay cut was linked to the company's financial performance, meaning that even if he, had, if, he, if he hadn't voluntarily given up this amount, it's unlikely he would he would have seen an amount anywhere near what he's used to. However, it's also tied to the execution of internal reforms meant to address issues stemming from the company's sexual misconduct scandals uh, that have come to light in recent years. Despite the commercial success with the recent Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Ubisoft has struggled, struggled to match the successes it, it experienced in the past. The company's sales revenue fell by 5%, and its stock tumbled, or sorry, its stock value tumbled by 50% in the last year. Considering the bomb that was Ghost Recon Breakpoint and the lackluster attention around games like Immortal Phoenix Rising, Ubisoft isn't experiencing the best of times. Ubisoft is also preparing to fight off a takeover bid from sev several private equity firms. Alongside a Skull and Bones leak that showed a game that's very that's still very in development, it's not looking good for the beleaguered video game studio. Uh, Janet, this article paints a, a scathing picture of Ubisoft. But do you like? Do you agree? Like, where where are you at without with where Ubisoft's been nowadays? I think Ubisoft continues to be fine. You know what I mean? Like, I think they put out. Obviously, there will be up and down years, especially if they're trying to replicate success. That they got before it kind of we've talked about this like a couple times but it's like with any stat where if you're up at one point you know if you like stream on twitch and it's like you're up 500 percent in subs this could be like two more subs or something mm -hmm. and then they're like you're down negative to 1000 it seems really dire but at the end of the day it's still enough to like function as a business um but yeah like ubisoft is interesting in that a lot of their projects maybe don't quite ever get their footing and maybe like it killed off a little bit earlier than you might expect but they like continue to crank out stuff and new stuff and a lot of stuff and most of their things are i'd say fairly critically well received like even if you think maybe the game isn't that exciting usually if you look at like the metacritic it's pretty solid if you look at the sales also pretty solid um so yeah but they're not like really you know an exciting studio i think for a lot of fans even if you are into some of their games but ubisoft is so big that like chances are like you've played ubisoft games and you are a fan of ubisoft games even if you didn't even if you wouldn't label yourself a ubisoft fan like you'd be somewhat hard pressed to find someone that's like no i don't i don't play or like anything that ubisoft touches it's probably unlikely yeah yeah ubisoft is, is, again is in such an interesting place i feel like we have this conversation once every couple of months where i go through and i'm like what are all the projects that ubisoft has put out lately and what are the ones that Just are coming dance. up and it is, I mean, Just Dance, of course, is always killing it. But then I, I, mm -hmm. I go through I go through the hyperscapes of the world, right? Roller Champions came out a few, few weeks ago, and I've not heard anybody utter the name of Roller, Champion, Roller Champions in literally weeks. Um, like, what, what what's going on with uh, the next, um, uh, what's it called? I always forget the name. It's X, X Defiant? X Defiant. Oh, oh, yeah. Right? Like the shooter that was right. announced that, you know, kind of went nowhere, right? What's going on with Division Heartland? What's going on with Skull and Bones? Are we ever going to see Beyond Good and Evil 2 again? There are so many questions regarding the games that have both come and gone from Ubisoft and the games that they have coming up. And even some of the ones that I think could have and should have been big hitters have fallen flat. Immortals Phoenix Rising, I think, was pretty decent. I know quite a few people that really dig Immortals Phoenix Rising. I think a lot of the honest really liked Immortals Phoenix Rising. Mm -hmm. But even that, I don't think had the staying power in terms of brand and ip that maybe they, that they wanted right that was not the next assassin's creed that was not the next tom clancy game right it uh, the mortal phoenix rising very much came and went and i don't want to be very doom and gloom because obviously there's also a lot of things that are working out of ubisoft right assassin's creed uh, valhalla i, I know uh, was good for many people uh far cry 6 you know hit like another far cry game you know like they still do have those those wins in there but you know, there's a shift going on where they are trying to lean more into a lot of free to play stuff. And I worry so much about that strategy because it seems like that strategy involves taking the IPs that work fine as not free to play stuff and then putting them in a free to free to play. You know, like does Assassin's Creed Infinite need to be an ongoing service situation? Does Division need to go free to play or is Division like is Division working fine as is? You know, I don't know if the free to play um, shift is the one that's needed right now to make everything better.
Yeah, I think too, like one of their kind of weak spots on a, you know, just critic level and not thinking about the financial aspect of it all is that they have like a pretty wide breadth, but like they're not exactly knocking out of the park with anything too specific. I think probably Assassin's Creed is, I think, the biggest shining star among their catalog at this point. Um, but they're like, okay, they they expand on onto different ideas as if their core ideas are, I think, done. And I mm -hmm. wish they weren't because I feel like there is... Um, to a degree, a desire for some level of innovation, I think, from Ubisoft. Obviously, that sort of uh, has a little bit of limitations by the kind of games they pl they make. And I think there's definitely an audience for, like, the big, you know, everyone's always roasting them for, like, the map markers. Or there's that meme of, like, if Ubisoft made Elden Ring, there's, like, a million things everywhere. But, of like, course. that formula does work. And You're there are an versions audience. of it. Yes, and there are versions of it that maybe would be a little bit less abrasive. Um, like, obviously, like, people sometimes make the comparison with things like Horizon, but not nearly to the degree of a, of a Ubisoft game. And I think that's because of the way they scope and scale and stuff their products. Um, but, yeah, like, for, for all our champions, like, you know, we both played it. I feel like we're at it's fine like it's fine i don't know what you're i mean I, the, the core game was fun for me roller champions was another riders republic where i really dug riders republic in the moment but it didn't have the content to con continue driving it roller champions i so much dig the gameplay of roller champions but i think that game has a content problem where the cosmetics are uninteresting and they're overpriced and then the modes that are in there just aren't compelling to keep me coming back in you know I, we, there's a lot of comparisons to knockout city because yep. it's a similar sort of deal in terms of the type of you know, fun, over-the-top sports game that it is. You know, very arcade. Even the art too. The art and looks the art, kind of similar. Art, art style. You know, it has a lot, a lot of stuff you can compare. And even the game feel. You know, like Roller Champions yeah. is a great feeling game, and Knock, Knockout City is a great feeling game. Knockout City had the content for me though. You know, Knockout City had different modes. They had seasons. They had a, a roadmap. They had had all these things that they rotated in there. And Roller Champions, it, it, for me, is is paling in in comparison to that. And I have no drive drive to go back. And the same thing happened for me with Riders Republic, where I played enough of the events. I was like, cool, that was a fun time. But the cosmetics that you, are the main thing that they're pushing here in terms of the gameplay loop and, and the unlockable elements just aren't exciting. And the ones that are exciting, you need to pay real money. And they're over. Like, I'm not going to pay 10 bucks for an, a giraffe costume. You know, mm -hmm. I that I, that I don't don't care about Riders Republic that much uh, as far as the cosmetic stuff to to drop money on uh, cosmetics in that way. You know, like I would I would like to. You know, I'll like I and like they I I think they have opportunities to do that kind of stuff. You know, like you know get an Assassin's Creed outfit into Riders Republic, get right. a like, Splinter Cell outfit, even though I know that that hurts the hearts of Splinter Cell fans. Whatever they put Sam Fisher in anything that's not Splinter Cell, but you know do that shit. Give me reasons to want to uh, grind for whatever outfit in Riders or Roller Champions or whatever live service games you got, guys got going. But I don't think they do that stuff well enough to keep people around, um, let alone modes and let alone great online and all the things you need to make these games really hit for people. Like, I, I think I, I remember playing Roller Champions and like that game not having good crossplay. You know, like we couldn't connect with each other if I'm playing on PC and you're playing on PlayStation. Even stuff like that. It's like you guys, you guys yeah. got to get that stuff right. Like you're Ubisoft. You know, it's not, it's not a, you're not a small developer. And I know you're made up of probably a lot of smaller teams, but still, um, a lot of that stuff I think if they got right would do so much better for their games. But they keep missing the bar um, for things that I think should be easy layups for them. Yeah, and then they end up tossing it aside as well, which like, yeah, again, kind of, huh, you know, if it's not working, I guess. But it's also it feels like there is this unfortunate flow to certain Ubisoft projects that. It goes out to die, and then we're on to the next thing. And it's yeah. like, okay, I mean, look well, at Rainbow Six they don't Extraction. mess again. Like, yeah. Rainbow Six Extraction came out this year, and that's a game with Rainbow Six in the title. None of us have played that game in months. Like, none of us have talked about that game in months. It's like, what's going on? Like, that game should be a hit. You know, that game should be should be a, a, a thing that the audience is flocking to, especially when you're um, when you're hopping off of Rainbow Six Siege, which was which was such a great experience and did so much for that type of Rainbow Six game, right? Like what happened there um i got a lot of questions with that but uh, again i don't want to be entirely doom and gloom because again they do have avatar coming up that's a game that i'm excited to see come out and see uh, see people take to i think that's probably going to be a, a good game for them and then also mario and rabbits is coming out soon like they have they have games that are gonna hit it's just like it's just those number of ones that where it's like why isn't this better you know why isn't yeah. this coming out and 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 actually making a bigger splash than, than it should but I digress. Let's move on to our final news story, story number six. Miniclip will acquire Subway Surfers maker Sibo. Uh, this comes from Dean, Dean Takahashi at GamesBeat. 
Miniclip has agreed to acquire Sibo, maker of the Smash mobile gaming hit Subway Surfers. Terms of the deal were not disclosed, but it's, pr it's a pretty big deal. The move is a sign of con consolidation in gaming, and it comes on the eve of the 10th anniversary of the launch of Subway Surfers. The game has become an evergreen title uh, that, is, that has had more than 3 billion downloads since 2012. In the last 18 months or so, Subway Surfers has seen its daily active users rise from around 15 million to 20 million a day to now 30 million a day, uh, 30 million or so a day, said SIBO CEO Matthias Gredal Norvig in an interview with GamesBeat. He credited the efforts to focus on live operations to keep players coming back. And I can stop there for the news story. It gets into more details, but I don't know if the audience is that is that uh, dialed in about Subway Surfers. I just threw this in here because one. I didn't realize the Subway Surfers was popping off like that. I didn't realize that was one, probably one of the biggest mobile games in the world. So kudos to you, Subway Surfers. But then also, yeah, start surfing. I, I don't think I realized that Miniclip was still around. I knew Miniclip is like the place I went to play Flash games. I didn't know that they were so big in the mobile space because obviously I'm not like that dialed into the, to the mobile space. But also like wild that I'm seeing Miniclip acquire the, the developer of, of Subway Surfers. Wild yeah, chip. for sure. Well, are you going to check out Subway Surfers now? How big into mobile no. are you? I love Subway Surfers, by the way. I'm, a, I'm one of those Subway 30 surfers? million people. I, not that, not as much, but I, I always do like the thing where I uninstall it and then I re-download it and it's all I do for like two weeks. I love, I love Subway Surfers. I, I see Subway oh, Surfers yeah, all the time. On, yeah, it's on TikTok all the time. That's yeah. why I know it. Oh, yeah, 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 yep. yeah. Yeah, you know what? I'll download it. Why not? Like, Be one of the 30 fine. million. I have, Be one uh, of yeah, the 30 I could join. Just me and Roger surfing along. Oh, gosh. Yeah, no, Subway, Sur Subway Surfers is one that I'm probably never going to play, but I got mad respect, respect for it. It reminds me of playing um, you would like Endless it. Runners back you would in the like day. It. It's like yeah, this, yeah. this Temple Run, right? Temple Run? Yeah, but it has three lanes, right? So you're going left and right, and then there's like a bunch of, there's a, like a trains coming at you and jumping on top, and you get upgrades. It's fun. It's fun. That's that's a bygone era for me. If I was in high school, I would fucking love Subway Surfers. Yeah. In 2022, when I, still, when I have other games to play, you know, games like Tales of Arise on my motherfucking Steam Deck. You're not playing that game. You're not going to play that game. I played play two hours of it. I'm, I might have Yeah, you're done. I don't know, man. I, I thought it would grab me more. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Maybe I just got to give another hour, Roger. Another hour. One time. more Maybe hour. That's we'll grab it. Janet, I can't wait to see if Tales of Arise takes me all the way to the end of that game, and I really enjoy it. But me seeing 50 hours of Tales of Arise is just so far away. If I want to know what's up coming out to Mom and Drop Shops today, where would I look? The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily show hosts each and every weekday. Also, I have mm. Subway Surfers on deck. You get into the game like immediately. It's kind of crazy. Like Holy I just cow. went through like two like little jumps in those like last two seconds. So there you go. Yeah. That's how they get you, right? Like a lot of these yeah. mobile games want to front load you with ads and make you click the X button to like, you know, go sit for all this shit to get to the good gameplay. Subway Surfers puts gameplay front and center. And then hits with the ads. Out today, we got AI, the Somnium Files, Nirvana Initiative for PS for PlayStation, Switch, Xbox, and PC. Uh, we got Air Twister for iPad and Apple TV. Capcom Fighting and Collection for PlayStation, Switch, Xbox, and PC. Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes for Switch. Madison for PlayStation, Switch, Xbox, and PC. Pocky and Rocky Reshrined for PlayStation and Switch. And then Pokemon Snap is out today for Switch. Now it's time. For kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong, where you write in, let us know what we got wrong as we got it wrong, so we can correct it for those watching later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games and listening later on podcast services around the globe. Uh let's see here. A oh, cozy bear, I pre there's a it's, it's not a you're wrong, it's like more additional info, but Cozy Bear writes in to say Bless might be onto something with his prediction about the Mario movie. And like he links up another thing, but we don't we don't have time to get into it. Um Nitro39 says, X Defiant has been shown since the reveal. I had a closed beta in insider sessions. I've been a part of these sessions, and there's nothing to, to note about it. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that, Nitro. Keep writing in with your anonymous tips about <laughs> X Defiant. I'm, I'm very excited to read them. Uh, today's Friday, which means that we have a whole week coming up of Kind of Funny Games Daily next week with a whole new slate of hosts. On Monday, you're getting Bless and Tim. On Tuesday, you're getting Tam and Gary. Wednesday, you're getting Blessing and Janet. Thursday, you're getting Greg and Mike Bithel. And then Friday, it looks like somebody's editing the doc live. You're getting, is it me and Janet? Is that true? Yeah. Yes. Holy cow. Me and Janet are back at it like a bad habit next Friday. If you're watching this. I won't be sick by then, but we'll see. Yeah, well soon. Again, make that hot toddy. Take rest. That's the thing that helps sickness, Janet. Yeah. Rest. Don't go on to shows like I do and, and, and be sick on the shows and then make your throat worse. Doesn't help. You'll lose your voice okay. that way. 
Um, if you're watching this live on Twitch after this, we're protesting the U.S. Supreme Court uh, overturning Roe v. Wade and raising money for the 35 abortion funds and pro-choice groups. Come donate and watch Greg, Mike, and Tim play some Fall Guys. If you want to catch that stream later, you can subscribe to youtube.com slash kindoffunnyplays. Uh, and then you can also chip in at kindoffunny.com slash... Um, <laughs> Greg is typing this live as I read it. Donate! Yeah, you can okay, chip in at kindoffunny.com slash donate if you want to help support that. Remember, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily, each and every day live right here on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. We run you through the nerdy news you need to know about. We have a Patreon post show for those that are subbed at the server level of patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames, so stick around for that. Otherwise, until next time, Game Daily.